الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر كبيرا والحمد لله كثيرا وسبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا لا إله إلا الله وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون ولو كره المشركون ولو كره الظالمون ولو كره المستكبرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Brothers and sisters Muslims of commitment and conviction Muslims of hard work and a struggle on this day we express the recognition that has been usurped by people in power by people who abuse this power and for us this is only temporary we lived before this we are living through it and we will live after it we know we progress into a future that Allah has promised his devoted ones and Allah does not forsake his subjects and his servants and his promise is the truth وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَنَّا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Brothers and sisters It may be true in our human terms that we have occupation we have invasions we have wars but this is not the end all of things we are not slaves of our moment when we say and when we announce 
الله أكبر We mean that Allah is greater than these conditions and these temporary circumstances. Our psychology has not gone down. We are not defeated in ourselves. One of the meanings that they want to take away from this occasion, from this day, from this annual meeting of the Muslims, is that it does not mean when we say Allahu Akbar, this is what they want us to think. When we say Allahu Akbar, it does not pertain to the issues of power that are causing all of these miseries in our worldwide body. We say to them, you will come and you will go. Before you came and after you go, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. No amount of military campaigns, no amount of budgets and treasuries, no amount of spying and informants are going to take away one iota from our confidence building, from our extended jihad, from our struggle that will live on, that will live on. Because when we say Allahu Akbar, we say that from the portion of, our, of us that belongs to Allah. And Allah is not defeatable. Allah is not destructible. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We know that we say this while there are crying children. We know we say this while there are misplaced peoples, families, and even societies. But this is not going to diminish the psychology that comes from Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We have enough courage to look at reality and not run away from it because we are in the company of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. How many invaders have come in the last hundreds of years? Where are they now? And these new waves of invasion that we see, where will, will they be? When our descendants will stand up on this day every year and proclaim to those who want to silence us, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We are not going to be bullied by such in positions as the Saudi government that has and has been in all of these years aborting this Hajj with false pretenses, with lame excuses, with flagrant lies. We can see through all of this 
because we say with confidence and assurance Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar we feel sorry and we have pity for some of us who accompany the royalty that has been undermining Islam and trying to cripple our Iman. We feel sorry for these brothers and these sisters who are in the payroll of their cashiers. We say to them also, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And let the facts speak for themselves. Mecca, Al-Bayt Al-Haram, is declared in the open book of Allah as an inviting city. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرْ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَيَذْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُومَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ فَلْيُطْعِمُوا الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ ثم ليقضوا تفتهم وليوفوا نذورهم وليطوفوا بالبيت العتيق Do you hear this? You, the occupiers, the usurpers, the thieves. You, the thieves who have stolen Mecca and the Medina from our heart. Then you stole it from our minds. And now you are stealing it from our bodies. And even though we know what you are up to, and even though we don't have the physical or the material power and wherewithal to confront you in an immediate sense, behind all of this, our psychology, our morale, our spirits rebound and say to you, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is a time when Muslims want to go to Hajj. These are some of the facts that speak for themselves. The Saudi Arabian government, that administration of evil, tells Muslims from China, brothers and sisters, Muslims from China, they go to obtain their visa in Pakistan. Maybe not many Muslims know this. Hundreds of them were told at the Saudi embassy, no, we will not give you visas to go to the Hajj. You go back to China and get your visas there. What do you think? You, the Saudi criminals, that you're going to get away with this. Not many Muslims are going to observe what you are doing. And by the way, who are these Chinese Muslims to begin with? In reply to your attitude, we say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And then, around 300 Muslims in Germany who want to go to the Hajj, you tell them they cannot proceed. We don't know, and this was a few days ago, we don't know what the outcome of that has been. But you certainly, you the Saudis, 
You certainly are ugly. Your character is ugly. Your behavior is unbecoming. When you do this to Muslims who have a God-given right to access Mecca and the Medina. For those of you who come from Africa, you know how the Saudi regime treats Africans or African Muslims. In this particular occasion in Ghana, a thousand Muslims want to go to the Hajj and they are told you cannot proceed. What do you think? You rulers, you misrulers in Arabia, you're going to get away with this? قُلْ تَمَتَّعُوا فَإِنَّ مَصِيرَكُمْ إِلَى النَّارِ You who are standing in the way of Muslims who want to go to Allah's sanctuary to fulfill their heart self obligations. What do you turn around in the meantime? What are you trying to do? With the same breath and with the same hand in which you are barricading the way to Mecca and to Al Medina inside the Muslim house, you are trying to spark and to spite the sectarianism. You are falling exactly within the schemes of Al Mushrikeen and Al Kafirin, which you have misidentified. Instead of looking at the real kafir and mushrik in the world, you turn the word around and you want to accuse Muslims of being mushriks and of being kafirs. We invite you, if you ever listen to these words, to an open in-house debate among the Muslims to identify and define who the true mushrikeen and the true kafirin in this world are. But you don't want that to happen. Why? Because you get your orders from your masters. You don't have one master who is Allah. You have many masters in this world who are the true mushrikeen. And to this we reply, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You want to build a wall. You are taking your cue from the Israeli Zionists. They're building a wall of separation between people. But we can understand the Israeli Zionists. They are enemies. And they feel insecure because of their guilt and their crimes. So they are building this 400 to 500 mile wall. We can understand that. But you want to build a wall among the Muslims. You want a, a, to erect a barrier between the Muslims in Arabia and the Muslims in Iraq. We see what you are doing or what you are trying to do. And we live on by answering you with Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You come up with a bid'ah an all-time bid'ah saying that there's a quota to the Hajj. O oh, Muslim brothers and sisters, whenever, from wherever, has anyone designed a scheme to limit the number of Muslims who go to Mecca and the Medina for the Hajj, saying for every million Muslims, 
we are only going to permit 1,000 Muslims to come to this Hajj. And you Saudi Arabians, officials, government personnel, administrators of Zulm, you are not even consistent with your own quotas. You give some people more than that quota. We take for example the Muslims in the United States. By everyone's common sense, the number of Muslims in the United States are around 8 million. A little more, a little less, depending on whom you're talking to. So there sh- the quota should be in this case, the case 8,000 Muslims who go to Hajj. For every million, 1,000. 8 million, 8,000. Why is it that the number of Muslims from the United States who go to Hajj are around 12,000? Sometimes 15,000, we are told, from the press. Why don't you, Saudis, uh, yourselves, who are issuing these visas, who are acting like little gods on earth, who told you that we need your permission to go to Allah and His Prophet? Where did this come from? And why do you, O Muslims, everywhere, why do you accept this Saudi fiat, this Saudi diktat, are these playing the role of God? Na'udhu billah wa nastaghfirullah. And to that we add, and let it echo in their private sessions, in their closed governmental decision-making meetings. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We say to you, you corrupt Saudis. Officials, decision makers, politicians, diplomats, we say to you, from our deep down conviction, that we stand by the word Allahu Akbar, and even though you stifle it during this time of year, every year, Muslim awareness is growing. And we say to you, you Saudi Latis and clients of Mushrikeen and Kafirin, we say to you, the Muslims are coming. And we don't mean the type of Muslims that you treat like cattle. You are treating, you say that these are the guests of the Rahman. They always say this in their media, Buyuf al-Rahman. The pilgrims, the Muslims who go to Mecca and Medina are Buyuf al-Rahman because they are the toys of Saudi laws and regulations. We don't mean these types of Muslims are coming. We mean the Muslims who are pronouncing and announcing Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. These are the types of Muslims who are coming. Now, you have something like a playboy. Not that you don't have plenty of them. But now you thrust this type of character to be your representative here in the United States. Your ambassador. We've had worse than him. The person who brought him to 
You are embassy here in the first place who has now been promoted to more or less engineer a civil war among the Muslims. We can see all of this and we can respond to all of this with the coming determination of committed Muslims who say Allahu Akbar and mean Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar kabira walhamdulillah kathira wa subhanallah bukra wa asila la ilaha illa Allahu wahda صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أنصار سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعوه سبحانه وأنتم موقنون بالإجابة ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده Brothers and sisters, we know that our condition, if we wanted to take a close look at it, there is more grief in it than there is joy. This day is meant to be as much as we can, a day of happiness, A day in which we visit each other, we contact each other, family members, neighbors, relatives, distant relatives, even our folks who are thousands of miles away. This is the time when we should honor this day. Actually, tomorrow, when the true Eid is, how many more years are the Saudi officials going to get away with imposing the wrong day on the rightful Muslims? How many more years are we to suffer from this pain of a pre-scheduled Eid? a pre-scheduled calendar that does not seek to satisfy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This day is a day of comfort, a day of solace, a day of togetherness. Express that as much as you can. Be forthcoming to those who are in need. Give to those who do not find the necessities in their lives. This shouldn't be a one-time event during the year. It should be an attitude that extends from this occasion and from this day to the rest of the year and the rest of the Muslims and the rest of the Mustabhafeen. Act as Allah and His Prophet expect of you towards your loved ones, towards your dear ones, towards those who don't find what they need in life. 
ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إليك نشكو ضعف قوتنا وقلة حيلتنا وهوانا على الناس يا أرحم الراحمين أنت ربنا وأنت رب المستضعفين فإلى من تكلنا إلى غريب يتجهمنا أم إلى عدو ملكته أمرنا إن لم يكن بك علينا غضب فلا نبالي ولكن عافيتك هي أوسع لنا نعوذ بنور وجهك الذي أشرقت له الظلمات وصلح عليه أمر الدنيا والآخرة من أن تنزل بنا غضبك أو تحل علينا سخطك لك العتبى حتى ترضى ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وأصحاب محمد اللهم صل على محمد وأنصار محمد اللهم صل على محمد وأزواج محمد اللهم صل على محمد وذرية محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم and كل عام وأنتم بخير a عيد that is blessed a عيد that is accepted and may the following one regain may the following عيد in the coming year regain its true meaning when we live up to our responsibilities and behave in the mode of Allah's Prophet may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ay mubarak